Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to my 2018 Formula One season preview. That's right, we're just a handful of days away now from the start of the new season. I for one cannot wait and I am sure you guys are the same. So in this video then, I will be discussing the race calendar, some of the changes around the sport that we're going to see in 2018. I'll also go over the driver lineup and give an opinion on what I expect from each driver this season. I will also reveal, as a few of you have been asking me in the comment section to do so, my 1-20 to 20 Drivers' Championship predictions, my Constructors' Championship predictions, and also let you all know what is coming up on the channel over the next few days. Let's kick off then by having a look at the 2018 Formula One race calendar. And the season starts this weekend in Australia before the teams head off to Bahrain and China. The Azerbaijan Grand Prix in Baku has been brought forward quite a bit actually to the fourth race of the season. The European season does start in Spain as it usually does. It's then on to the glitz and glamour of Monaco before we head to one of my favourite races of the season which is the Canadian Grand Prix. Absolutely love that track. Usually throws up an absolute belter. So really looking forward to that one. Also looking forward to the French Grand Prix. I wasn't when I first heard where it was going to be held. But over the winter, Jonty has managed to convince me that that could be one of the best races of the season. So really looking forward to that one. That does also, of course, start F1's first ever triple header with Austria just a week later and the British Grand Prix, potentially the penultimate British Grand Prix on the 8th of July. Obviously looking forward to that one because all being well, I will be there. We've got back-to-back -back races before the summer break with Germany back on the calendar, followed by Hungary. After their four-week break, the teams will be in Spa, followed by Italy, which will round off the European season. Singapore, of course, then starts the flyaway rounds. The Russian Grand Prix in Sochi has been pushed back from April all the way to September. So quite a move for that one. The Japanese Grand Prix is on the 7th of October. We've got a back-to-back -back again with the United States and Mexico. Brazil will be the penultimate round. And of course, the season finishes in Abu Dhabi just one month before Christmas on the 25th of November. It is a long season, 21 races, but that is absolutely fine by me. Let's not forget as well that races will now start at 10 past the hour with the majority of Grand Prix being pushed back by a total of 70 minutes and that starts from this weekend. There have been a few new introductions to the sport as is often the case throughout the winter. The first and most obvious of those of course is the Halo. Now I'm not going to go on about this too much because we've pretty much covered it ad nauseum on the channel over the winter. What I will say though is there has been a lot of criticism surrounding it, particularly over how it looks. But to be honest, even though the season hasn't even started yet, I have to say personally I'm already used to it. Is it ugly? Yeah, of course it is. But at the end of the day, aesthetics should never be an argument against a safer Formula 1. We've also got to change to the number of power units each driver can use before taking a grid penalty. Last season, of course, each driver got four components, but this year it will be reduced to just three. What that also does is prevents teams from really developing that engine too much through the season. Last season, they will have had three opportunities to bring upgrades to that engine, whereas this year, they're only going to have two. And that's already led Renault strategically planning where they're going to take their penalty so they can bring upgrades to their engines. Formula One have also tried to simplify the penalty system. And although it is still a drop of five grid places per extra component used, if a driver receives more than a 15 place penalty, they will simply start from the back of the grid. And if one or more driver is relegated to the back, they will start in the order the penalties were applied. I think that's all in a bid to get rid of this ridiculous situation where drivers were getting 30, 40 place grid drops, but starting 20th. Pirelli have introduced two new compounds of tyres for this new season. They are the Hyper Soft and the Super Hard. That takes the tally up to seven dry compounds of tyres with the Super Hard, Hard, Medium Soft, Super Soft, Ultra Soft and Hyper Soft. And obviously, of course, they will also have the Intermediate Tyre and the Wet Tyre as well. Frankly, I don't think we'll see the Super Hard at all this season, really. Each compound of tyre is a grade softer than it was last year, which means a Super Hard is equivalent to last year's Hard Tyre, which wasn't used at all over any race weekend. The Hyper Soft tyre, which many are predicting actually will be pretty much a qualifying tyre, and that's how I feel about it, will make its debut at the Monaco Grand Prix and then will be used again in Canada. Honestly, I can see that tyre getting used strategically by midfield teams in qualifying, and that could lead to a nice mix-up of the grid as well. We've got new safety car restart rules as well. I'll just go over this very, very quickly. So when the safety car is deployed, all of that stays the same. But when race control decide it is safe to get the Grand Prix back up and running again, instead of there being a rolling start, drivers will line up on the grid in race order for a standing race restart. That's obviously if conditions are deemed safe to do so. If it's wet and they decide it's not safe to do a standing restart, then it will remain as a rolling start. 
I'm not 100% sold on it as of now. I mean, I can completely understand why they've done it. You know, the start is probably the most exciting part of the whole race weekend at times. So if we get multiple race starts, in theory, there should be more excitement over a Grand Prix weekend, say in Monaco, where we might get quite a few safety cars. But at the same time, it again, like DRS and things, it feels very artificial and in some ways a little bit unfair on the race leaders. But then I guess it's the same for everybody. So over the course of the season, it will probably equal itself out. Before I jump into my championship predictions then, let's have a look at how the grid lines up for 2018. Mercedes stick with Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas as teammates for the forthcoming season. Valtteri Bottas actually not a bad season in 2017, given how I guess you could say late he was drafted into that Mercedes seat. I think he'll be a lot closer to Hamilton in 2018, but there will be massive pressure on him from the outset because he is only signed up for one more season. Ferrari is sticking with Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen, another Finn in his final year of his contract. And if rumours are to be believed, he is already planning to retire at the end of this season. But hopefully Kimi Raikkonen will be able to go out with a flourish and maybe get a couple of race wins. But I do feel that Ferrari will just play the 1-2 game, which is how they work. And that's how they've always worked. Red Bull will be sticking with what is arguably the best driver lineup on the grid with Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen. Of course, Daniel Ricciardo is another one of the top six that is out of contract at the end of this season. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. I do expect Max Verstappen to win out in this battle this year, though. Sergio Perez and Esteban Ocon are staying at four cinder in what is probably going to be one of the fights on the grid. It got a little bit tasty between the two of them last season. That led to four cinder, of course, stopping them racing. But the team have come out over the last few days and confirmed that the drivers are free to race this year. But with McLaren's resurgence, Renault looking very strong as well. Force India need their drivers to work together. And I do think Esteban Ocon will just, and I mean just, pip Sergio Perez in the championship. Williams faced quite a bit of criticism over the winter over their driver lineup decision, but the team have stood by Lance Stroll and brought in Sergei Sorokin to partner the young Canadian. As I was saying just there, Renault looked very, very good this year and they are going to be sticking with Nico Hulkenberg and Carlos Sainz who gets his first full season with them. Pierre Gasly and Brendan Hartley have stayed on at Toro Rosso and although this is technically their second season in Formula 1, I regard them as rookies because it's their first full season really. We didn't get to see what they could do towards the back end of 2017 because of the reliability problems, the car wasn't where the team wanted it to be. So I'm pretty much regarding this as their first season and as such, it's going to be interesting to see how they work together. They could be one of the surprises of of this season as could Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen at Haas they remain there for another year a pretty experienced lineup to be fair and a fairly consistent one as well McLaren retain Fernando Alonso and Stoffel van Dorn in the first year of their Renault partnership I do fully expect Fernando Alonso to beat Stoffel van Dorn over the course of the season once again I do highly rate van Dorn but he's got one hell of a teammate to try and match and he wasn't a million miles away last year to be fair and finally, of course, we have Sauber. They keep Marcus Ericsson for yet another season. He will be joined by Ferrari junior Charles Leclerc in his rookie season. He's a highly rated youngster. Many expect him to be a future world champion and possible contender for that vacant Ferrari seat. Personally, I think that's a little bit too soon for him, but who knows? He might really impress this year, but I do think he will beat Marcus Ericsson. But it is a scrap that I think will be very close, a lot closer than many predict. And it may just lead people to look at Marcus Ericsson in a slightly different light if he can get close to the highly rated youngster. So on to the championship predictions then. Now, just a very quick disclaimer. These are just my opinions. It's inevitable some people won't like them, but that's absolutely fine because this channel is all about opinions and a bit of healthy debate as well. As I have backed him for the world championship throughout the winter, I am going to stick with it and say that Sebastian Vettel will be world champion at the end of this season from Lewis Hamilton, but there will be absolutely stuff all in it between the two of them. I fully expect a title decider in Abu Dhabi, although I prefer one in Brazil if I'm being honest. Just maybe use Abu Dhabi as an end of season showcase or something like that. I think Bottas will finish up third with Max Verstappen fourth, Daniel Ricciardo fifth. I have put Kimi Räikkönen in sixth, but the reason I've put him there is simply because I think he will be number two at Ferrari and that is going to cost him in the Drivers' Championship standings because those Red Bull boys are going to push each other so much and will be massively consistent this year. Carlos Sainz is seventh ahead of Nico Hülkenberg, Fernando Alonso in ninth, just ahead of Esteban Ocon, with Perez in 11th and Stoffel van Dorn in 12th. But, quick disclaimer again, between those six drivers and those three teams, that will chop and change throughout the season and that could literally go anyway. But because it's so tight, I've just had to go off of testing and how I think they'll develop through the course of the season. As I said before, I think Roman Grosjean will pip Kevin Magnussen. They should be close to that top four fight, but I think they'll be well clear of those just behind them. Lance Stroll 15th with Pierre Gasly 16th, Brendan Hartley 17th and Sergei Sorokin in 18th. But again, that could be very, very close between those two teams with Charles Leclerc just pipping Marcus Ericsson for 19th place in the championship. 
As for the constructors, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that Mercedes will wrap up a fifth consecutive title. Red Bull, for me, with that consistency from Ricardo and Max Verstappen, will end up second with Ferrari in third place. I'm going to say Renault will just pit McLaren for fourth, with McLaren in fifth, of course, therefore, and Force India in sixth. But once again, that is going to be very tight and could go either way. Haas is seventh because although they arrive in Australia potentially with a very, very strong car, I think they will be outdeveloped by Renault, McLaren and Force India over the course of the year. But they should be well clear of Williams in eighth with Toro Rosso just in ninth and Sauber in tenth place, but not cut away as they have been in previous seasons. They are just my predictions, of course. But what are your predictions for the 2018 World Championships? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Before I go, though, I just want to let you know how things will shake out over the course of a race weekend here on the channel. On the Thursday before the race, and of course that means starting this Thursday, will be the Grand Prix preview. There won't be a video after practice on a Friday, but I will be tweeting during all practice sessions. That's FP1, FP2 and FP3, of course. On a Saturday, we will go live within 30 minutes of qualifying ending to give our initial reactions to the session and what we're kind of expecting from the race based on how they will line up on the grid. And we will go live on a Sunday once again around 30 minutes after the race finishes for initial reactions to the race with the full race review coming on Monday. So lots of content coming up over the next nine months. That is it from me. I will be back at 7pm UK time tomorrow for midweek live. And of course, the Australian Grand Prix preview will be up on the channel this Thursday. It's all getting very real now. In the meantime, though, you can follow me on social media links to Facebook, Twitter and Discord are all in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.